Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'll be showing you guys how to use the reduction of order method for second order OD. But before we go ahead and tackle a question, I want to firstly have a look at the main ideas and the basic assumptions on how to actually begin and use and even spot when to actually do it. So let's have a look here. Now, the very first thing you need to know before you even think about reduction order is to is to actually have a Y1 solution already in advance here. Yeah? If we do not have Y1 already, then we cannot use this. And at this stage, we now want to create a change of variable. In other words, we want to replace YT with some equation in terms of UT, but to do so, we need Y1 multiplied to it. Now, from this, the aim is to differentiate this twice. Reason why is because we're going to substitute this, its first derivative and its second derivative back into your second order OD. And when you do that, you're just going to have an equation in terms of u, u prime and u double prime, yeah? Now, this is where the reduction order actually kicks in. So at this point, the reduction order is literally telling us to reduce the derivative order by one level. So that's that's pretty much the, the main part of it. And doing so, you're going to now set u prime prime as, let's say, new variable, w single prime, and then u, the first derivative of u, to just a regular w. So you kind of see it's gone down by one level, 2 to 1. And one to zero, and the reason why we do this is because this second order OD, which is now in terms of W, becomes a first order OD in terms of W. And solving this one, man, it'll be easy. So solving that is quite straightforward. And when you solve for W, well, you you can easily solve for U because it's, it's a direct one. And when you solve for U, well, you plug it back in, in the beginning, and you got your solution for Y. And that's it, guys. That's literally reduction order in a nutshell. So guys, I'm now going to show you how to use this method on the next slide. So, see you soon. We start with y2 because that's what we, what we want. So we're going to use the, the new variable v times the previous solution y1. y, this y2, equals v times t to the power minus 1. Now, taking the first two derivatives so we can plug it back in, we should get the first derivative, which is differentiation is using the product rule, we get v prime times t minus 1 plus, now we leave this alone and we times it by and we drop the power minus 1 down. So this becomes minus v t to the power minus 2. So simple case of product rule applied. And again, repeat this for the second derivative. We get y prime prime to t minus 1. And then again, we should get minus v prime t power minus 2. Now the division is part, so this is the first part, minus, so we get here. So we get v prime t minus 2, copy minus 2 down, so we get minus Okay, so far so good. So now just simplifying all of this. This this time here we know we got these two terms, so these two are collected, so should we we should get v prime prime t minus one, two lots of this, so minus two, v prime t power negative two, plus flip the sign, two v t to the power minus three. So now let's plug this back into the equation. What do we get? So plug in each one first, we've got two t squared bracket. Equation, v prime prime t minus one. Oh, sorry, two v t minus five. Power minus three plus T bracket in a y prime which is here. V prime t minus one minus v t minus two. Minus three times the original y which is v to the power t minus one equals zero. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is to collect everything in terms of v. So in, in terms of the v prime, okay. So in other words, looking at v prime, we should have v prime. So we've got two t squared times t to the power minus one, which, which should give us two t. Let me do plus. In terms of v prime, what do we have? So looking across, we have um, minus 2 v prime t power minus 2. So taking minus 2 t minus 2 times this should give us a nice minus 4. Um, t minus 2 times t squared it cancels out. Nothing here. Yep, and another v prime there. So we have t. So these two actually cancel out too. So it's actually going to be plus 1. Yeah, and that's it. That's actually, that's, that's, that's actually done. And lastly, we're going to have plus, wait, wrong pen, plus v, and this one is going to be, let's see, hopefully these will cancel out. So you should get this term, 2, so it should be 4 times t squared times t minus 3, should be, because 2 times 2, that's done. This one should give us t times t minus 2, should be minus t to the power minus 1, and we've got minus 3, t minus 1, and this rounds it off to 0. And actually, the whole idea is that this term should have cancelled out. So reduction order is supposed to remove the last term. So in fact, all of this is cancelled out. So our actual order of reduction has somehow returned us with a very simple 
false first order OD. Okay, so now the true method of reduction order kicks in. So guys, let's just tidy this up a bit. So we have V prime prime times 2T, so just put in the front. 2T V prime prime. Minus 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so minus 3 V prime equals 0. And let W be our new variable, and this should equal V prime. So this is going to be another variable in terms of T. So because of this, the first derivative of, of W is, of course, the second derivative of V. So replacing this equation, we should have 2t times w prime minus 3w equals 0. So w prime, if I said v prime. And, and voila, now we have a first order od. To make it perfect, we should divide everything by 2t, so there should be nothing in front of this constant. So it should be the w prime minus 3 over 2t w equals 0. And guys, this is pretty much it. So now we just integrate it simply. So using the general rule... So finding the integrating factor, so this is quite simple. I will say let i be the integrating factor, or not i in terms of t. And we always do e to the power of the integral of, of um, this, the variable in front of the first term, w. So this should be minus 3 over 2t dt. So now we just integrate 3 over 2t. Which is, what does it actually give us? Well, you could always take 3 over 2 outside, so we have e and take a negative sign, so minus 3 over 2, and integral of 1 over t dt. And this is just simply the log. So it should give us e negative 3 over 2 log t. And then, thankfully, with the, with the rules of the log, we can use the number in front of the log and put it as a power. So minus 3 over 2 here actually becomes... That's it, that's an integrating factor. And now, finally, our actual solution for w. So remember, we're solving the first order od. That means the actual solution for w is... 1 over the integrating factor times the integral of the integrating factor this is term here which we can call qt dt plus a constant knowing that qt is 0 usually we have a value that all of this cancels out so actually we're just left with plus c inside that means 1 over it is this so 1 over t to the power minus 3 over 2 is the same as saying t to the power 3 over 2 plus times c and finally let's let's wrap this up so now we have all these terms on the right, so we have w equals t power 3 over 2c, c is just a random constant, v prime equals w, so now let's just plug everything back in and try and find the objective which was y2. So, without further ado, what do we have? So because w equals this term, plug into here, we have v prime equals t to power 3 over 2 times c the constant. Integrating this to give us v will give us, you know, dropping the power down, we should have 2 over 3t and plus in the power by 1 should give us 5. Now, plugging this back into y2, so should we, have, we should have y2 t equals, and that's it guys, I mean simplifying this out, we should have now, to do, so this should cancel out, and this should drop the power down, so this should be 2 thirds t5 2 minus 1 should give us 3 over 2 c1 plus c2 t to the power negative 1. Thank you.